Hello and a very good afternoon from the Norwegian capital Oslo. Now I don't know if you can tell by the abundance of like layers I'm wearing. It's a bit colder, it's about minus eight at the moment. So we're looking forward to heading inside the station in a moment to catch my ride with the Gruppen across to Bergen. And we're traveling in comfort class today, which I believe is not quite first class. It was the highest level of class of, on offer on this train, but um, it's just a slightly upgraded experience, I think, but still be interesting to see what it's like. Um, about six and a half hours through to Bergen on the west coast today. So yeah, I'm just gonna head in and check out the station and yeah, let's head across to Bergen. Now, when I recorded this, I must have been rather excited at the thought of getting into the station and out of the cold as I stumbled over my words. The class of travel we're traveling in is actually called plus class, with two S's that is. Anyway, Oslo Central Station is located in the city centre, in close proximity to the waterfront. The station opened in 1980 and is the largest railway station in the country. There's plenty on offer within the station and there's even a shopping centre connected to the side of the building, although I should issue a word of warning to anyone who hasn't been to Norway before. While the country is an absolutely lovely place, everything here is very, very expensive compared to the rest of Western Europe. While I had known this in advance, I hadn't quite expected a meal in McDonald's to set me back the equivalent of £15, so yeah, just bear that in mind. As I took this trip in the run up to Christmas, the station was rather nicely decorated for the festive season. I found that Norway seemed to take Christmas very seriously in this regard, with most buildings being quite heavily decorated, which I thought was nice to see. The main concourse runs above where the tracks are. It's pretty open and spacious, and seemed to handle the number of passengers it serves quite well. <laughs> Departure boards can be found in the middle of the concourse, displaying everything from short distance commuter trains, right up to long distance and international services. I'm a little early, so our train isn't being displayed just yet, but the service I'll be catching is the 1543 to Bergen. I must say, I'm a big fan of the Christmassy train decoration. It's a really nice touch in my opinion. Off to the side here, there's a small ticket office as well as a few self-service ticket machines. As usual though, I've bought my ticket in advance online. Yeah. One last thing before we head off to catch our train. I've just come off from the main concourse to take a look at the old Osterbahn and Station departure hall. It opened in 1854 and trains would have departed from where we are now right up until Central Station opened in 1980. Nowadays, it's been preserved in the form of this rather nice shopping arcade. Anyway, that's enough looking around the station, time to head to Bergen. All of the platforms are accessible by ramps. The train pulls in from the depot about 10 minutes prior to departure. Haulage is provided in the form of a pair of NSB L18 electric locomotives at top and tail. These were built in 1996 and 1997 and have a top speed of 200 km an hour or 124 miles an hour. Sandwiched between the locomotives is a rake of class 7 passenger carriages. These were built between 1982 and 1989. The coaches are limited to 160 km an hour or 99 miles per hour. Considering their age, first impressions are that these coaches are actually pretty modern. This is thanks to the fact that they were last refurbished about 10 years ago. A seat reservation is required to travel on this service. I have seat 48 today, which I chose from a seating plan when booking. Despite being in a 2 plus 2 configuration, I found the seats to be really quite spacious, with legroom being practically unlimited. All plus seats feature these nice wooden tables. Slide the table back and it'll reveal space for storing personal items. In my opinion, this is one of the most ingenious storage solutions I've ever come across on a train. Cup holders and coat hooks can be found at each and every seat, and there's also a QR code you can scan to look at the menu for the cafe car. More on that in a bit.
Each seat also has access to a two pin plug socket and I'm pleased to report that these works just fine. On the opposite side to the plug you'll find a couple of levers that allow you to control the seat's recline. I found that a very good amount of recline was on offer here. As for the seats, well, I found them to be really comfortable and just what I needed after my long journey over from the UK earlier in the day. I also think that the upholstery used here looks very nice and smart. Last couple of things, firstly there are some extra coat hooks on the wall should you need them and there's also a reading light in the panel above your head. Now that we've taken a look at what the seats have to offer, we should probably take a quick look at where we're heading today. Well, it's a bit of a convoluted route today, as we head west on the Bergensbahn across the rather remote Norwegian countryside. We're scheduled to arrive in Norway's second city at 20 past 10, after a total distance travelled of 493 kilometres, or 306 miles. Scheduled travel time is 6 hours and 37 minutes and our top speed will be 160 kilometres an hour. And we pull out of Oslo Central Station, bang on our 1543 departure time. We spend the first few minutes in tunnels as we make our way out of central Oslo. One thing that really struck me is just how early it gets dark here in the winter. It's barely even 4 o'clock and yet night is almost upon us. Now I lived in the Scottish Highlands for the better part of 15 years and even that seemed to have nothing on this. Just over half an hour after departing Oslo, we arrive in the port city of Drammen. Drammen also marks the beginning of the end of the Oslo commuter belt and, as such, many regional trains terminate here. As we leave Drammen behind, we pass a depot where many of Vigruppen's regional trains that serve the Norwegian capital and the surrounding area are maintained. After departing Drammen, with there now being very little to see out of the window, I actually managed to fall asleep for a couple of hours. Now I know I'd had a long couple of days before this, but still, this is a real testament to the comfort of these seats in my opinion. I awake to find that we are, for the lack of a better term, in the middle of nowhere. It's a shame I didn't get any daylight on this trip, as I'm told the Oslo to Bergen route is supposed to be really quite scenic. The vast void that is the countryside is only occasionally interrupted by beacons of light in the form of the small towns and villages that the train serves, such as here in Nesbian. Conditions out here in winter are pretty brutal. It was snowing sideways for much of the trip. Starting at the front in coach 1, let's take a look at what else the train has to offer. In the middle of the plus coach, there's an area where you can help yourself to complimentary tea and coffee, although sadly the proper coffee maker was out of service on this occasion.
Coach 2 is a multifunctional family and accessible coach. At the front, you'll find a soft play area for kids. I actually think that this is a really nice idea, and I'm sure that this has helped keep many a child quiet and entertained over the years. And towards the rear of the coach, there are some spaces that can be used for either wheelchair users or push chairs, as well as an accessible toilet. The rest of the passenger coaches are all second class. While also in a 2 plus 2 configuration, these seats offer significantly less space. That said, they still offer a pretty comfortable experience in my opinion. Towards the middle of the train, you'll find this rather nice looking cafe car. Quite an extensive menu is on offer here and, considering that the cost of things in Norway have a tendency to make you want to cry anyway, the prices aren't much worse than you can expect to pay on the high street. I'll leave a link to the full menu in the description below. Oh. Yes, that's uh, apple juice, oh, yes, and uh, still water. As you'd expect, toilets can be found at either end of each coach. And they're pretty bog standard as train toilets go. Everything you might need was present and working, and I found them to be nice and clean. On the way back to my seat, I decided to grab a cup of tea as well as a bottle of water, although I'd rather not think about how much that cost me. One last thing, I was quite surprised to find that this train was not Wi-Fi enabled, but I was equally surprised to find that, despite how remote the places we were travelling through were, 4G coverage was pretty good for the most part. Anyway, we're now just pulling into Finces station, which at an elevation of 1,222 metres, or 4,010 feet above sea level, is the highest railway station in Norway. A short while later, we enter the 10.3 kilometre, or 6.4 mile long Finse Tunnel. The tunnel was opened in 1993 to replace a section of track that was often blocked by snow. While in the tunnel, we reach not just the highest point on the line, but also the highest point on the Norwegian rail network at 1,237 metres or 4,058 feet above sea level. About an hour out of Bergen, we pull into the village of Vossevangen, which signifies the beginning of the end of our journey. It's not too long after Voss that the bright lights of Bergen come into view. Overall, I found this to be a really nice experience. I must say, when I found out that the upgraded plus seats were still in a 2 plus 2 configuration, I was a bit concerned, but all that was quickly alleviated upon boarding. The seats were fantastic and perfectly comfortable for the six and a half hours it took for us to travel over from Oslo. Another thing that wasn't too bad was the price. I paid 659 krone for my one-way plus ticket today. That's about £55.40, $73.40 or €65.10. Considering how expensive a country Norway is and the fact that I only booked two weeks in advance, I don't think that's too bad at all. If you can book further ahead, plus tickets seem to start at around 530 krone, with low fare second class tickets starting at around 250 krone. As for the question of whether or not it's worthwhile spending the extra to upgrade, well, by the time I booked, it was only a little bit more to travel in plus. But if you can get a base fare ticket, I think that second class would be just fine. So in my opinion, 
this was a really pleasant journey, but what did you make of the experience? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Now all that's left for me to do is to welcome you to Bergen, where we arrive about 5 minutes late at 25 past 10. As we get off the train, the sleeper to Oslo awaits its departure on the adjacent platform. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this feature in a future video. So if I have a nice journey across from Oslo with the group and the uh, plus seats were rather nice, I thought I um, was a bit disappointing the proper coffee maker was out of service, but yeah, very comfortable, very smooth, the crew were friendly and um, yeah, pleasant journey overall. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.